Alrighty, new shot here. There is audio. Let's go. <laughs> Alright. The good thing about like the the tricky thing is to have the audience know where to look when you have two characters that are moving all the time. The good thing is that once he's here, the walk from here to here is fairly the same so that we're not hyper focused on him. So when she looks up, I'm actually I'm okay with this back and forth. And then usually when you don't have a face, you want to go somewhere else. But I like your broad poses there. So we're actually sticking with this. And it's it's actually rarely done that that animators on the, on the shot turn away people's faces. Because you want to see that and show off lip sync. But when you turn away the face, you can then fully rely on body acting and pantomime. It's actually pretty good. The, well, the first concern that I have is this here. So all of this is okay. Like this is clearly separated. She goes down so that he comes in. That's great. There's a little bit of a... He starts talking and she does a lot of stuff. But at the same time, like I said, it goes straight into a walk. It's not like... I still understand what is going on. So I think this still works for me. This is the thing of... And now... She's completely covering him. And even if this happens, it's, it's an odd... Like peeking from behind her face. Ideally, she would be here shh, while he's here. And when he's like that, she's here. So you have a cleaner or no overlap and a cleaner separation between the two. This works. And that's fine. I like that she gets close and invades his space so that he has to go back. And all that. Oh, that's great. So that to me would just be in terms of staging, what's going on. Would be the biggest, the biggest change. You know, or you keep her. But he is maybe, even though I like the balance here, like he would have to maybe end here. And then this has him here. But then we're very right heavy with such an empty space. So I still feel like balance wise, compositionally, if they're like that, it would feel better. So you would have to, I don't know if you want to, when she, uh, when she does this, maybe she takes a step. So she ends up maybe here head wise, right? So we have that. And then when she gets up, she will have to take a step over this way so that she ends up on something like this. She will be here. And if you look at where that body is and she takes a step over, she might end up here. This might perfectly line up. And then she will be here. And when he goes back, you might just have him here. And then I'll understand. Then it gets tricky. Because when you're here... Maybe, maybe he might end up being here, but... Worst case, you have a panning camera. I don't know. I will keep that camera static for now. That's the only thing. What you can do is instead of moving away this way, he would move this way. But that, that's tricky. But then she would be a bit more three-quarter. We kind of lose that nice silhouette there. So it might be, it might even be a little bit of a mix, to be honest, where what if this is your framing? Comes in. I know this is a bit of a destructive note in terms of a walk. So walks are hard, but you would have him end up here. So that when he's doing this, he's actually here and has all of this. But you still did the thing of moving her a bit more to the left on that shuffle. And when she gets up, she still takes a little bit of a step. So it's basically removing 
this character a bit to the right, her a bit more to the left, so that we end up in something. Yeah, I know it's it's tight and this is all empty. Gets a bit tricky, but it's doable. The only other thing would be you keep what you have. And the way he walks back here is instead of going this far, he just has to walk here. So not like that, but more like that. So that, again, he will be here. And then when he comes over, it's just a bit cartoonier, snappier to get into this. So you can keep all of the animation. The only thing you would change is walking-wise, he, he ends up further to the right. So that he ends up here. And then that movement will just be different. That might be the least destructive note. Yeah, that would be the suggestion. Animation wise, I'm gonna turn off the sounds. There is a feel that there are like a, there are a lot of keys in there. And I see like a lot of wobble in and stuff moving it feels kind of choppy and wobbly it, it almost feels like early stop motion where things are kind of really busy and if i look at this arm like all those different keys and all those different things moving it's it feels it, if you would spline this i i guess this is going to look really messy like if you look at all the things that are moving in this body and the shoulder and the arm and all of this but also sometimes separate and disjointed so that's my biggest concern i like the ideas i like the animation like the poses and what you have again this is just my only concern here but i would say if you take this and spline it it's gonna look messy so just be mindful of that but the rest is cool again i love that setup that we can see both like that i like that she has no secondary action I love this. All that, yeah, especially the hand poses. Like, yeah, yeah. That's all great. I like that she looks over and then has to fumble and look for the flashlight. And I like this relationship, how close they are. And she gets into his face and he moves away, pointing with the object. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So biggest concern, the technical aspect of how wobbly everything feels at the moment. Feels like too many keys in this stepped version. And just the character overlap. That's yeah, it's not the best here. And that's that. All right, thanks. All right, there's an email. You can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.